Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. I'll read up to 11. The Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Verse 3. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Verse 4. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. Verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. In verse 7. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Verse 8. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God, verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him, verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Praise the Lord. So we are looking at a story that follows the Pentecost experience. In Acts chapter 2, something happened. Acts 1, the Bible says in verse 8, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Then in Acts chapter 2, we see the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And we know that they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And then going down in Acts 2.47, the Bible says, And the apostles gave great, with great power, they gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That is where power is, people. That is where power is. When we acknowledge, when we acknowledge, when we recognize the resurrected Jesus, meaning the living Jesus, hallelujah, who is not just in heaven, he's here right now. Because he said, where two are gathered in my name, there I am. Do you know that he's here? Hallelujah. Do you know that because he's here, anything can happen anytime. Hallelujah. When you are walking on the streets like this, these guys, they were just happening to be walking. <laughs> they, they had not prayed to go and perform miracles. They had not put posters. Hallelujah. So that they may raise the, the, the people who are lame. No. They were walking into the house of God. Now look at them, look at them. The Bible says in verse 1, now Peter and John, Peter and John, friends from youth, I actually know they were fishermen and they must have been partners. If you read Luke chapter 5 verse 10, it tells us about Peter and his brother. Who was his brother? Andrew. And John and his brother. Who was his brother? James. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And they were fishermen. Hallelujah. We know their history. They were fishermen. And you know that fishermen were not men who had, you know, the highest status in the society during that time. <laughs> and these guys left fishing in order to follow who? Jesus. They had education, but just, the, you know, the primary education. Because every Jewish boy had to go through the, the they are called the madrasa, something like a madrasa class. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then later, the higher education, they didn't have it. They were simple men, not fancy, unschooled in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. The Bible says they were unschooled and ordinary. 
Because we know people who go to school don't look, you know, they don't want to look ordinary. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're not just found anywhere on the streets. No. Hallelujah. They are found in offices, putting on very nice shirts and nice coats. Hallelujah. But there was something special about them. They had been with Jesus. Glory to God. Their life was marked with Jesus, not degrees, but Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. They had nothing else to claim but who? Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus alone. Now, while they were walking as disciples of Jesus, they had experiences with Jesus at a very personal level, more than the other disciples. And I pray that each and every one of us will get to a place where they'll have a personal experience with Jesus. Not, like, not, not the experience we get in church. No, when you are alone in the house. Hallelujah. When you are alone in the car, when you are alone in the workplace, I pray that you get such an experience, your own experience, because we see them going with Jesus up the mountain. You remember it was Peter, James, and John, and they saw Jesus in another form. They saw Jesus get transfigured. Hallelujah. Do you even remember it is Jesus who sent them to prepare the last supper? <laughs> Hallelujah. Peter and John sent by Jesus. Do you even remember when they heard about the resurrection of Jesus? They ran quickly to go and check the grave. You remember? Peter went and John went to go and look and check whether there is someone inside that tomb. Glory to God. Now, the Bible says these men, the two men, the one who had a close relationship with Jesus, I'm already telling you how, how you get what, what, what we are about to be talking about, a close relationship with Jesus. Two men went up together. Went up together, meaning, you know, the temple was built on a mountain, and there were terraces, you know, some steps going up, hallelujah, as you are going in. So that's why the Bible says they went up. And they were going together. I pray that you find friends who love Jesus. Glory to God. And you go together to the house of God. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. House of God. Whether it is raining, let us go. <laughs> Where? Into the house of God. Praise the Lord. So they are going into the temple at the hour of prayer. Now the Bible says the hour of prayer here. Now, some believe it was uh, still at, during the time of the Pentecost feast. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So they are going there, not necessarily to do the, you know, to celebrate the feasts of the Jews, to offer sacrifices like they used to do. No, they were probably actually going there to go and preach. Now, you know, someone will tell me, no, they were going to pray. There's no way it is written they were going to pray. The Bible has said, they were going at the hour of? Uh-huh. Angalia Biblia yako. They were going to pray. No, it says, just says they were going at the hour of prayer. The hour of prayer for the Jews was the hour when they would sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. They would offer sacrifices. So they must have gone to, to, to preach to the other Jews, probably. Number two, it is possible they were also going to pray. We don't know. They, were, they might have been going to pray. Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 24, verse 53, upon the resurrection of Jesus, that the disciples continued in the temple doing what? Praising and blessing God. Hallelujah. Maybe they were going there to lift up their hands and saying, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Now, this is being the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. The ninth hour, the third hour was 9 a.m. in the morning. So the ninth hour was 3 p.m. That was the time, in, you remember Elijah's time? The time he offered the, the, the sacrifice, the evening sacrifice, you remember? Praise the Lord, that was the time, verse 2. And then the Bible says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gates of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Now, we are not told about the name of this man. We are not told about his name. We don't know who he is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But we are told about his birth, that he was born with a defect. Amen. 
He was born lame. Now, this is not someone who had an accident. He was born lame. And this is telling us something. It is telling us something here. It's telling us something that he, this guy might not have had any possible reasons to expect cure any time of his life. That his situation was helpless, completely helpless. They had not seen, the Jews of those times, they had not seen any man lame from his birth walk. You know, you can break your leg and then later on you go to someone, they tie something on your leg and then you walk again. But this one was born lame. There was a congenital anomaly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the Bible tells us something about him. That in Acts chapter 4 verse 22, this man was 40, now 40 years old. Can you imagine? For 40 years, 40 years lame, not walking. He didn't even know what walking looks like or feels like. Now the Bible says, you know, you know <laughs> these things are very interesting. Because later on we see him walking. You know, we train children to walk. You know, God's power, don't play with God's power. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> a helpless man without a name, the Bible tells us, he was carried and he was laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. I'm not talking about be that beautiful. But the Bible tells us that he was being carried, he was being helped. He seemed to have been a burden to others. Uh-huh. Being carried every day, you know, always at the beck and call. <laughs> uh, uh, the others are his, at his beck and call. Praise the Lord. Being helped, you know, like someone here. Maybe there's someone here, you are always, you are always, because of your situation, there is someone else. You need someone else to help you. Uh-huh. You need someone else to feed you. You need someone else to pay your school fee. You need someone else to do what you need, what needs to be done for you. Hallelujah. But I tell you, there's a miracle coming in the name of Jesus to get you out in Jesus' precious name. The Bible says he was laid daily at the gate to borrow. Verse 3. When seeing Peter, he saw Peter and he saw John about to go into the temple, the Bible says he asked for money. He asked for arms. Verse 3, verse 4. And Peter fastening his eyes. Peter looking at him intently. Peter fixed, fixing his eyes on him, the Bible says, he told him, Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, look on us. Hallelujah. Look on what? On us. I want to tell you there is something about the eyes and there is something about faith with the eyes. <laughs> the Bible says that, that, that walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Not by sight. But there is something here that's about to happen to him. That is why Peter wants him to see him. He wants him to focus. No, don't, it's telling him, lift your eyes from the money. From the money you're expecting from me. I want you to see me. I want you to hear what I want to tell you. Praise the Lord. This is another kind of looking he's calling him to. Verse 6, verse 5. He gave and he gave heed unto them. Meaning he looked on them. And the Bible says he was still expecting to receive something from them. So this man is expecting money. Hallelujah. He's probably expecting the dollar of the day. <laughs> he must have been expecting the Kenya shilling of the day. Or the five bob or the ten shilling. The five coin that you usually give you know, on, the, on the streets as you are walking of the day. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Peter spoke, Peter spoke, Peter spoke and said, silver and gold. Because this man was expecting what? Silver and gold. And there is someone who has come to church today and they're expecting silver and gold. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I will respond like Peter and John. Peter said, have I none? But such as I have, I give to thee. Then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Could it be that Peter and John had an empty pocket at that time? Could it be? Could it be that they had an empty pocket, you prosperity preacher? Could it be that these were men and women of God, apostles, the apostles of the day, but not having money in their pocket? I'm sure they didn't have M-Pesa that day. They didn't have M-Pesa because you, you may not have silver and gold, but you have M-Pesa on your phone. Hallelujah. Did they, they didn't have M-Pesa that day. No. Did they have a bank account? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I know they were, the men used to bring uh, uh, money to their feet, hallelujah, and they would distribute. I don't know if they retained some of the money and kept them, but there's something I'm reading here. <laughs> they, Peter said, have I none? Apostle. Hey, guys, Apostle Peter. Let me read again. Apostle Peter and John are saying, have I because apostles today are not expected not to have money. Some even preach and say they had no money at the moment. <laughs> they didn't have money at the moment. They'd walk in and, and preach and collect something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, could it be that this man knew that they were the leadership? And people would bring money to them. Uh -huh. Could it be? And that's why they, the man expected from them to receive money. <laughs> Hallelujah. But today we are not talking about money. Because you know today money has filled our minds. Everything is about money, money, money. At a taxes, taxes is money, money, money. Uh, in Nairobi you cannot live if you don't have money. You cannot move if you don't have money. You can't. You will be paralyzed That's like this man. And I think that it's possible that there are some people here who are paralyzed. They are lame like this man. It is possible. Amen. It is. Maybe not physically, but you know, <laughs> there's nothing. The Bible calls him a lame person. It calls him a beggar. He is known by his condition, not his name. We are told the name of John, we are told the name of Peter, but we don't know the name of this man. Like today, if you do not have money, we will not know your name. <laughs> Atutakujua is very unfortunate. But let me tell you, God values everyone, God values every soul. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now look at what he said after talking about money. He said, I have none. He says, it's not about money today. Let me tell you what it is about today. It says, but such as I have, I give to thee. Now, I went and searched this such as I have. What does that mean? The Bible actually, the, the original writing is, what I have, <laughs> what I have, I give thee. What I possess, which is far more precious than wealth. Which if Peter did not have and he had money, he would be useless. And I want to tell you, if you have so much money but you don't have this, then that money may not help you. Because yesterday, is the other Sunday we talked about salvation in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we said money cannot save you. Silver and gold could not buy, could not be used to buy our souls. But the precious blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. He says, such as I have. Today, I want to let, by the time we are leaving that gate, that, that door, to have Christians who can say, such as I have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without a shadow of doubt, such as I possess, to be so assured and so rested in what you have. Hallelujah. So confident and so bold about it, such as I have. Whoa, glory. <laughs> 
Glory, glory, glory to God. This is what God wants us to be. Men who are so sure that we have something. You may not have silver and gold right now, but I want to present to you what you have. Are you saved? There is something you have. There's something you have. It says, such as I have, I give thee. I apply to you. <laughs> I use it for your benefit. That's what Peter is telling him. Hallelujah. Then look at what he says, what, what the scripture tells us, what Peter had. He said, in the name of Jesus. What do I have? <laughs> the name. <laughs> Hallelujah! We have the name of Jesus. Don't you remember when Jesus rose from the dead? He set captivity captive. He went and sat down in the heavenly place at the right hand of the Father, the place of authority, and he rules and reigns. And we are seated there with him. <laughs> we are seated with Jesus at that place of authority. We are ruling and reigning in this life with Jesus. Hallelujah. Read Romans chapter 5 verse 17. You shall reign in this life with Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of such as I have. The name of Jesus. Now, Jesus up there in the heavens is not just God. He is God and man. <laughs> he is one of us in the heavens. And he rules. And he's going to continue to be God forever, 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 and ever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, such as I have the name of Jesus, of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Who worked the miracle? Because there's a miracle coming. Who worked the miracle? Who did it? It is Jesus. <laughs> when you call that name, Jesus is there. Hallelujah. When two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. When you call on that name, he is there. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he is alive. He is alive to live forevermore. You see, I was the one, I'm the one who was alive and died and rose again. And I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you guys, I'm so confident. Anytime I say, Jesus, he's there. And I don't care whether you look at me with those eyes. I'll shout it and say, Jesus! Hallelujah! I know he is there. He's already there. <laughs> Hallelujah! It is such as I have. Hallelujah! I have it. I have the name of Jesus. I have the name of Jesus. It belongs to me. When I got born again, I received it. When he rose from the dead, he received the name. The Bible says he was given the name above every name. Hallelujah. And because he was given the name above every name, he received it also on my behalf. We have the name. The name above every name. Hallelujah. Oh God, thank you. I don't have much, but I have your name. And if I have your name, I have everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now you see, Peter did not originate this power. No, no, he didn't do it. No. He, he asked them, when people gathered later, he asked them, why are you looking at, at us as if it is by our own power and as if it is by our own name that this is done? No. Hallelujah. He was referring them to who? Jesus. Jesus, praise the name of the Lord. Because it was not them, it was the Jesus they had. I have the name, I have Jesus. And guess what? I can prove it. I can prove it. Leo Kwai service, is there a lame person? There's no lame one. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. 
<laughs> the legs were in the name of Jesus. The legs of this man were where? In that name. Hallelujah. Now, now that I have the name, do you know what is remaining? I just simply need to act on that name. That is what someone here now needs to do. You have a situation, don't look for your pastor. You have the name. Now use the name. Use the name. <laughs> you have a rich inheritance in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus are material things. In the name of Jesus are non-material things. We have joy. We have peace. We have righteousness. We have justification where? In the name of of Jesus. We have riches where? In the name of Jesus. We have legs where? In the name of Jesus. We have health and vitality where? In the name of Jesus. We have the land. We have the car. We have the houses where? In the name of Jesus. Those who want to get married, the husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that wife is in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Such as I have, I give to you today. In the name of Jesus. Now look at what he did boldly. Verse 7. And that's why I know he was not talking quietly. Oh, in the name of Jesus. No, he was passionate. He knew what he had. You know, it's so interesting very many rich people are very arrogant people. Very arrogant. You go to them, you're asking for money. You're wasting my time. What do you want? Hmm? That you brought, brought investment papers. No, no, no. Get to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point. <laughs> no, you've taken hours and days to prepare that proposal, that, that grant. You, you're, wasting, you're wasting my time. You're wasting, wasting my time. You guys need to start behaving like these people. Such as you have. In the name of who? Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm saying, don't waste my time with this money business. You're asking for, no, 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 no. Such as I have, I give to you now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Now look at verse 7. He took him. He took him. He didn't wait for, do you, you know, if you did this today, you'd be arrested. He took him by the hand and lifted him up. Woo, glory. <laughs> and immediately... His feet, you see, when it comes to the name of Jesus, akuna dignity apa. No. Hallelujah. There's no, you know, dancing like a, a you know, a, 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 what do we call them? I usually see them, ladies who are put on the wedding gown, walking down, you know. No. Hallelujah. This is the David's one. Praise the Lord. Such as I have, I give to you. And then he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately... Immediately, let me tell you, when it comes to the name of Jesus, immediately things happen. Immediately, his feet and ankles received strength. At that point in time, this man needed strength. He needed strength, and when Peter, Peter put his hand, there was power transfer on that guy. Hallelujah. <laughs> While he was doing so, I was lifting him. They shrank muscles. You know those muscles, you know, you know we know they, they, in, in medicine, we say muscles atrophy. They, they become weak and they start, you know, like, it seems like they are disappearing. Hallelujah. But these muscles, something happened to them. Even the bones. The Bible says the bones, the feet, and the ankle bones received strength. There was strength. In a moment, there was strength. And today, in a moment, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, may that situation in your life change. And look at the, 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 the behavior of this guy. The Bible says in verse 8, he leaped up. Woo! He was, he leaping up, stood. <laughs> what he could not do before, he did. What you could not do before, you will do in the name of Jesus. What you could not do before, you will do in the name of Jesus. What you could not do before, you will do in the name of Jesus. He stood up and he walked. The Bible says, and entered with them into the temple. Glory. Amen. Lifted up, stood up, and walked. In your finances, you shall stand up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Even in your relationships, if that is where the issue is, it, it shall stand. Hallelujah. And shall, it, it shall be established. And you shall walk. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, and he entered with them. Praise the Lord. Get into company of believers, of other disciples like Jesus' disciples. He got into their new company. He was no longer a beggar among them. Now, to, now he has a name. <laughs> now he, he is one of them. Now the attention is on him. Uh-huh. Before he was the one giving attention. But this time he's the one who's attentive. People now are attentive to him because of the name of Jesus. Because of what the name can do. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at verse 9. The Bible says, and all the people saw him walking. They saw him walking. And he was praising God. He was praising God. And let me tell you, people who know God, people who have experienced God, are praisers. Their mouths are always open, praising God. They're always, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Those who have mouths are, are closed, they are still not, have, not, have not yet seen. They have not yet seen. Because they are trying to be dignified about it. But this one said, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> he had a reason to say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Open your mouth and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey guys, praise the Lord. praise the Lord. Glory to God. So this man praised God. Something God has done, has done to him. He had just received feet. But let me tell you, you have received more. You have been saved. Greater miracle has happened in your life. You have been saved by God. You are not going to hell. You are going to heaven. You are now a child of God. You have a reason to praise God. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you have breath? Keep your mouth open. Give him praise. And praise him from the heart. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And his praise affected people. His praise made other people get attentive. They wondered what was happening. All the people saw him walking and praising God. Verse 10. And they knew that it was he that sat for arms. They knew that this was not another fake miracle. They knew that this was not a stage-managed miracle because the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is from heaven, is not from Nigeria. It is not from Tanzania. No, no, no. Not from South Africa. Not from Cumberland here, Papa. Not from Siaya or Kisi. You know, you know those places. You know why I'm mentioning those places. Hallelujah. Because there's a name of, of some, some guy from Cumberland or from Kisi. You know? You know? No. The name is from heaven itself. And from heaven cometh miracles. Uh, now you're even, I'm even speaking KJV. From heaven cometh. I mean, the, it continues to come. <laughs> miracles. Hallelujah. Sometimes Jesus has to step down from that place and stand here and perform a miracle for someone. Because they have mentioned the name. The name. The, the name of Jesus. This was not stage managed. Now, you see, if someone was, had had an accident, it is very easy to say, ah, no, 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 no. That was just natural, normal healing. <laughs> this guy was lame from birth. A lame beggar healed. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, Jesus has performed a practical miracle. A practical miracle of making someone who was lame to walk. Praise the Lord. These guys could not believe it. That's why they were amazed. The Bible says, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto the guy. Praise the Lord. Now, there are miracles in the name. There are miracles in the name of who? Jesus. But today I wanted to tell you, you have the name. You have the what? The name. Do you have a situation? Yes, but I want to tell you something better that you have. <laughs> the name. The name. The name. You have a situation. You have a financial situation. Okay, I agree. It's fine. Do you have a relationship issue? Sour. Sour. To Mekubali, we have accepted. We are sorry. <laughs> but there is something else that you have. 
such as you have the name of Jesus. From heaven itself. Packaged from heaven. The name of Jesus. You see, Jesus went up, but he left us his name. Hallelujah. And then he said in John 14, whatsoever you demand in my name. Whatsoever you demand in my name, it shall be done unto you. Whatsoever you demand in my, in my name, it shall be done unto you. That's what Peter and John were doing. You want to be disciples like them? Let's be disciples like them. And begin to use the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. <laughs> in that name, in that name, in that name. When you say the name of Jesus, miracles are bound to happen. Miracles happen in that name. The name of... <laughs>